if you mortgage your building, you can live, right? The best idea of going is buy a billion dollars of property, mortgage it $900 million, put in $100 million in equity, uh, let the money supply expand 10% a year, you'll have $100 million in equity generating a $100 million return every year. Within nine years, you'll have $2 billion in property from $100 million in equity, right? So, so you like the idea of, le of leveraging up property. Property, though, means I can lease it, I can sell it, I can mortgage it. The thing that makes Bitcoin better than property is the fact that, like energy, right? Ma if matter is energy and energy is matter, imagine I snap my hands and I decompose the energy, uh, the, the matter into energy, and then I recompose energy back into matter, right? If I can do that with a hotel, I can take a thousand room hotel, I can decompose it into a thousand virtual rooms, and I can uh, send them to a thousand cities. And I can sell each hotel room night at the, at the highest rate and get 100% occupancy. And then if I'm smart, I'll break it into room hours and I'll have 24,000 room hours and I'll send that to wherever somebody wants a room hour. And then I get cuter and I turn to room minutes. And if I get really cute, I realize that I don't need it to be a hotel room. Can you imagine if I invited you to a business meeting in a hotel room with a bed in it? It's kind of creepy, right? But if I snap yes. my fingers and the hotel room becomes an office, now I can invite you to a meeting and in my virtual office, so that's not creepy anymore. And if I snap my fingers again, it becomes a conference room or a conference center or a spa or a museum. All of a sudden, I've got, uh, I've got polymorphic real estate in cyberspace. At that point, I'm, I'm developing the property I'm oscillating, vibrating the property. I'm decomposing and recomposing the property. One, one thinks about, and you realize you go from 70% occupancy at $100 a night to 1,000% occupancy at $500 a night to 5,000% occupancy at like $18 a minute because it's pure energy. Now it's not even proper anymore, right? It just feels like pure digital energy, which is also... If you thought of it as money, money is energy. What did I do? I just loaned out the money to the highest bidder for as long as they wanted to use it. And they, what do they want to use it for? Maybe Apple Computer wants to build it in the iPhone. Maybe, maybe some trader in Singapore has got a way to exploit the basis trade and lock in 18% yield, but he needs to borrow $18 billion, but only for 37 minutes. Can't do that with gold. Can't do that with a building in Los Angeles. You can't even do that with U.S. dollars in the 20th century banking system. Try sending a billion dollars to someone on a Saturday afternoon for 37 minutes. You can't do it. There was a war on currency that kicked off in March. The money supply of the United States was probably growing at 7% a year for a decade. It started growing at 21% a year in March. And uh, what I, you know... I looked at the world and I said, okay, well, you know, maybe the, the cost of capital 7% and I can get 3 or 4% interest on my treasury in the, in the 10 years before. It's like, okay, it's a nagging thing. Like it's a minus 3% thing. In 30 years, I'm going to lose half my money, you know, if, if I don't do something, you know, it felt like a small thing. But all of a sudden in March, interest rates went to zero. Monetary inflation rate went to 20, 25%. Now it wasn't 30 year problem. It was you're going to lose all your money in three years, four years. And so the same issue, right? Which if you, if you study the history of paradigm shifts, what the scientific historians say is you need one of two things. Either everybody's got to die. The old guard's got to die. It takes 30 years and people that resisted the new idea, they lose their money. They exit this earth. I think you can see it like there are certain people with a lot of money in the world that they're not ever going to touch cryptocurrency They're, you know, but their children or their heirs will do it. That's one way. You just wait for the next generation. It takes 30 years. And the other way is a war, like a, a, a traumatic near death experience. Like you don't believe in you're not going to fly in airplanes. You don't believe in airplanes. And then World War Two comes and then they're sinking all the ships. 
and you realize that you're probably going to die if you don't get an airplane. Or when someone flies an airplane above your city and drops bombs on you, you become a real believer in air power in a hurry, right? You can be in denial if it's uh, if it's an option uh, in peacetime. But in war, you know, do you believe in nuclear power? I don't believe in nuclear power. Well, are you against it? Look what happened in World War II, right? The war ended with nuclear power. So, it, you know, things come to a grinding halt and you have to jettison your prejudices and your biases when you have this kind of extreme experience. So I think the war on COVID was accompanied by a war on currency and uh, inflation took off. And, the, you know, the Fed said, we're not even thinking about thinking about raising interest rates. So at that point, you realize, well, for the next four years, this is the status quo. You, if you're in denial, when you're in denial, you're like, oh, it's a short war, 15 days to stop the spread, right? It's a short war. Uh, it, it'll be over quickly. Uh, interest rates went down, but they'll go back up again, and the money supply will not get expanded, and this is not a problem. I don't have to solve this problem. You're in denial. But at some point, if you say, wow, this is going to go on for four or five years, six years, and this is going to be... It's going to be like this for a while. And there's no hope if I don't actually change my behavior. At that point, you embrace a new idea. And for us, it was digital transformation of sales and marketing and services via web and YouTube and Zoom and digital transformation of the balance sheet. We need to find a crypto asset that looks like gold on a big tech network that you can move at the speed of light. Did I need it in February? Not really, but by April, by April, it was worth billions of a billion dollars to the company. So, yeah, I needed it in April. And uh, at that point, you just I just looked at the history of Bitcoin. And I think that, uh, you know, Bitcoin about 12 years old by then. And it's it's impossible to know in the first one, two, three, four years. Right. How this thing was going to work out. But. The real important things that I focused on were the block size wars. You know, if you look at the experience of Bitcoin from 2018 to 2020, the entire asset class hardened and institutionalized and stabilized. And it was pretty clear that Bitcoin was going to be the dominant winner of proof of work, not Bitcoin Cash, not Bitcoin Satoshi Vision. It was pretty obvious what happens in the event of a fork. You know, it's not, it was kind of scary in 2018, right? 2017, 2018, 20, very, very complicated what's going on. But I think that you could start to read the tea leaves by mid 2020. And you could see that this was digital gold on a big tech network. And it was the dominant proof of work crypto asset network. And it was $200 billion by then. And I think $200 billion in 10 years of experience and 10,000 copies. And if it defeats 10,000 copies and, it, and if it lives through a civil war, like the block size wars, and it comes out ticking, I think at that point, that's enough uh, history to give you confidence to start to make a serious investment. And I had that benefit, you know, I was very lucky to have the benefit of hindsight. If this had happened in 2018, it would have been much, much more difficult. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn 500,000, 1 million dollar, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where do you start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany, as you can hear, and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them. And if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange. And one of the biggest are, for example, Binance and Coinbase. 
These are trusted and well established exchanges, but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.